Hey friends, welcome to Seed Starting Saturday. It is your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler and I am really happy to be here with you guys this morning. So I know we missed out last week, but we have a lot to get together for this morning. And this is going to be our regular lineup that I'm going to be doing um, my weekly sunflower sewing. And I am hearing from so many of you guys that you have fallen off the van wagon, that you are not doing your weekly sunflowers. Friends, fall sunflowers are not only the most awesome, if you're a home gardener, beautiful in your garden, but friends, if you're leaving them in the garden, they become seeds for all of your favorite friends out there, right? That eat bugs. They turn into seed for your birds. Flower farmers, wake up and smell the roses, friends. If you don't have tons of sunflowers each and every week, right up until your frost, you are missing out on a huge piece of cash flow. So if you're new here joining us today, oh, I have so many things laying around me. It's, you know, we do a big shopping show here on Friday inside of our app. And I'm kind of sitting on part of that set. If you could see beyond me, it's like a bomb went off in here. We are just rearranging and moving stuff. And I have a lot of things that I want to mention to you this morning. But first, I just want to say for all of you folks that may be joining us for the first time, Welcome aboard. Um, I'm, my name is Lisa Mason Ziegler, and um, I am the leader here at the Gardener's Workshop, which began as a small flower farm back in 1998 that has warped into so much more. We have an amazing website, gardenersworkshop.com, full of wonderful resources. It's also home base to my podcast, my blog, um, our online garden shop, our library of amazing online courses, whether you're a flower farmer or a gardener, you just can find all kinds of good stuff over there. And now you can also find your way to get our app to join the live show on Fridays. Friends, the live show on Friday, this is what was Friday. This is the harvest that I gave the 411 on um, these beautiful flowers. Um, and so if you go to the website, go to shop, one of the very first selections that drops down is the live shop and show. You can go there, get the app through your app store and join me on Fridays. Watch the replays. And this is why I wanted to tell you that this is um, for those of you that are doing sunflowers every week with me. This is like who this was made for. This is a special sunflower bundle that's only available in the app. You will not find this on our website. It's 20% off than buying these six seeds separately. This is, a, this is called the Sunflower Succession Seed Collection, and you'll find it in the app. It's 20% off. These are six jumbo packs. Um, and if you're doing sunflowers every week, this is for you, friends, but you'll only find it in the app. The other thing I wanted to say... A couple of flowers that I actually root this time of the year just to get a jump um, as the season is, you know, not coming to an end, but it's in sight, right, is marigolds and azuratum. Both of them root really easy. You can root them in water, but for me, with the sheer volume that we need to do, I use a plug tray. I take a cutting about this long with just one or two leaves on it. You don't want a lot of foliage. I dip it into the um, rooting powder hormone. This definitely speeds up the process, friends. No, you don't have to do it this way, but if you're a grower, you're always trying to move through things efficiently. This is part of the step. So I take my cuttings, I dip them in, I dip them in water, then I dip them in that, and then I just stick them into a plug tray and give them the same conditions that I give seeds, warm conditions, water them every morning. And I just planted a bunch of, um, did y'all know about the white swan marigold? Holy cow, y'all, you can find the seed. It's not on the website yet. It's coming this week. It is a creamy buttercream color marigold with low scent. Um, and so my plants are actually blooming. Oh, that's them. I have to show you these. Stand by. I forgot I had them up here. Look at this. They are absolutely scrumptious. They are just gorgeous. Anyway, the seed will be on our website um, probably by the end of the week. 
um, be next this coming week. But I took cuttings of mine to get another round going um, and they've already rooted and I've already potted them up and it's just a really quick and easy way. So now on to what we're here for today, right? Seed starting Saturday. So if you have questions related to growing flowers, farming, home gardening, whatever you got seed starting, um, just post them in the comments and I will circle back to those before um, we end the show here today. So I do also, I brought these in and wanted to show you, look at this green coxcomb. Is this not the most gorgeous? I mean, oh my gosh. And I thought I would introduce you. This is how it starts. So that's a single stem coxcomb. It's one of the real pricey ones. Um, this is, this will be planted this week. These were started July 11th and they are ready to go. Um, to the garden and they will be blooming in no time. So this is them. This is soil blocking. If you aren't a soil blocker, um, you can learn so much about that. This is 60 plants on this little tray. Look how healthy they are. So these are what is today to six. So these are 25 days old and I brought others in here. These were for a photo shoot and I thought might as well show you. These are marigolds. This is more of the, um, not the white swan, this is the mix. Now, if I wanted to double this volume, you know, you, pinching is always beneficial to branching annuals. Keyword, you would not do that to these. These are single stems, but this marigold is a brancher. You could pinch this. I don't have a pair. Oh, it broke. So I just broke that off right there. That's pinched right above the bottom. I could take... This little, this one's a little immature, but I could take this, dip it into the rooting hormone, stick it into a cell. I've got a bug, y'all. Um, stick it into a cell and root these. So instead of just having 60, I would have 120. These are ready to go to the garden. These will be ready to go to the garden in about 10 or 14 days. So that is your lowdown tip for today is that. Not all flowers do that, and I don't know about other flowers because I haven't tried it, but marigolds and azuratum, it's too late for azuratum, I think, though. So, um, that works really, really well. And then look at this. This is 60, I mean, this is 40 basil plants. These are just getting ready to be planted out. Also, this is that new towers basil, which you can't find seed anywhere. We're trialing it. Um, we'll let you know how that goes. But this is a five by seven tray with 40 plants. Pretty dadgum beautiful, right? All right. So back to y'all. I'm still drinking coffee here this morning. I've already done a podcast with a guest this morning. We have a new podcast series that's coming out. It's called Seed Talk. And it's with our seed manager, Lane. And it, this is all her brainchild. She's the one that fields all the questions about seeds and seed starting and all that kind of stuff. And she has libraried all that. And now we have turned them into um, some really cool podcasts. And the video slideshow with the questions will be posted here on YouTube. So you can watch it and hear it all at the same time. Anyway. So I'm out of talking already. I'm not out of talking. I'm just still drinking all my coffee. All right, let me get some of this stuff out of here. And this morning, here's my, this is my notes for my podcast. The only question that she allowed me to see before the podcast was, the question was my top five cool flowers for the home gardener and my top five cool flowers for flower farmers. And y'all have to wait to hear it. Um, to find out. And that was really fun. All right. So I'm just getting my peas in a row here. All right. So weekly sunflowers, friends, the secret to the weekly sunflower deal. And by the way, these are white light and white night sunflowers, pro cuts right behind me. The key to having weekly sunflowers is to plant sunflowers every single week. I basically plant the same varieties and in the same family of colors so that they say on the same timeline. That means if you're planting them every week, you should be cutting them every week, you know, 55 to 60 days later. Right. And it 
what will happen when you first start growing, you'll be growing all different kinds of colors like I'm doing now because I'm no longer a high production farmer. When you go into high production, I 100 percent see the sunflower right there. That's that is pro cut orange. That's the sunflower that I planted 1200 a week for 26 weeks for eight years and sold out every single week. Um, you don't need to have a bunch of different colors. If you're a small grower doing like maybe one small farmer's market or a bouquet subscription, it is helpful to change up the colors to give you a little bit of diversity. But when you're in high production, I'm here to tell you that commercial customer customers will buy that every single week, week after week. You don't have to have the different colors. And when you're growing at that level, you don't have the time to sort through different colors. All right. So the sunflowers. So what we're talking about doing is planting the sunflowers every single week. Um, and we do that in, I'm just having to think to myself, y'all, how we, there we go. We do it in these 128 plug trays. This is the way that commercial growers do it, y'all. Yes, you can plant sunflowers out in the garden, but to have the best stand with the least amount of work and the highest success rate, this is how you do it start in 128 plug trays. The um, soil that's in this plug tray is just a 50-50 mix of any potting soil. Does not need to be seed starting mix. Um, and mixed 50-50 with compost. Sorry, y'all. I get distracted looking over at the questions. I'm not there yet. Um, so 50-50 potting soil compost. In the into this 128 plug tray. And then we are going to use this garden marker, which this is made to be outdoors um, in the UV rays and moisture and to hold up. And this week I'm doing a little bit of a mix up than what we normally do. Under normal growing conditions as a flower farmer, I would be doing pro cuts in any whatever color, and I would probably be doing sun fill. This week, I've added a newbie and I want to, I don't have a, there's not a picture of it. I don't have one here to show you today, but you'll find the seed over on our website. And I highly recommend that you add this new sunflower to your lineup. It is the sunflower Marley, M-A-R-L-E-Y. And here's why it is so special. One of the problems that we experience with bi-colored and special colored sunflowers from every variety, not just pro cuts, particularly the bicolor. Bicolor is where it's yellow and will have a band of like, like a plum color on it. Marley, which is also, um, I think it's 55, 40, I'm sorry, 50 to 60 days. So it's the same number of days as a pro cut. But guess what the big quality is about Marley that's different than all the rest? Why you should grow it? It holds its petals, y'all. Um, when I heard Dave Dowling say that, um, Marley is um, through his company and I mean, through he was at the, at the hybridizers and Sharon that this is the only bi color that he's aware of and that I'm aware of too now that doesn't drop its petals prematurely, which is a real problem with many of the specialty cuts. So we're adding Marley to the mix. And this week I'm also starting... Um, the sun fill purple, which is the sunflower. We don't grow for the bloom, but for the head before it blooms. And it's got a little brush of not really purple, but it's a dark color. So it's nice for fall. I'm using masking tape with our garden marker. And let's, let me just do this. What is today? I can't believe it's August, y'all. I was getting ready to write July. So we're doing half a tray of Marley, half a tray of the sun fill. All of these sunflowers that I'm starting today, even though it's different um, than what I normally do, some of them, they're still on that same timeline. Because what happens, friends, it doesn't just screw up the timing of when they bloom. It screws up your bed where you're trying to clear a bed, you know, cut it all at one week, clear it so you can replant it with something, right? This is Sunfill Purple. I think this is actually the first week I've started those. And then I'm also going to be doing Vincent, which is another quick sunflower that a fresh and a Vincent choice. One has a brown disc, 
One has a screen center. And what's different about them from Pro Cuts is the um, the tilting of the bloom. And so I'm, I'm really trialing that this year, but it's super quick. Um, so that's why we really wanted to, it was highly recommended to me. I just dropped the top to this, darn it. Um, oh my goodness, it's way over there. I'm sorry, boy, I'm gonna have to leave you open for a while. Um, so there's always new stuff coming down the pike and we're always trying it. And you just never know. And sometimes, and this is a great lesson to me and to everybody. Sometimes blooms look identical. Like, why would I grow Marley when I grow bicolored Pro Cut Plum, which is one of our favorites? When I heard him say it holds its petals, holy cow, that was like a wonderful, wonderful tip. So who knows where that will lead. So I'm going to do Marley first. And so back to how we do this and why we do this, right? So we sow sunflowers every single week in these trays. And let me, you know, I'm having to move stuff all around here so you can see. I'm sitting up, up here in front of me is a big screen TV, which is not on, but it's got a nice stand that it's on and it's, trying to figure out how to make double use of our set for both days and we'll see how it works out. Anyway, so this plug tray is a 128. It's full of 50-50 potting soil and compost. I'm just dropping the seed right on top and one seed per cell at this time of the year. Those flat, those sunflowers that are going to be blooming in the middle of summer, primarily mid-June mid to July, they can get bigger because the day lengths are longer, even though you're planting them on the same spacing. I occasionally then will put two seeds per cell, and you do not, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, half a tray is eight. Um, putting two set two seeds in a cell tightens up the spacing and keeps the blooms that perfect size that we're shooting for, which is a three to four inch bloom. You do not want big sunflowers, friends. They are not usable in bouquets. Your commercial customers don't really, occasionally they might want some, but that is not what they want week after week. They want a, a sunflower that'll fit really nicely into their arrangements. Um, big giant sunflowers are a novelty, but they are not useful. All right, y'all, I'm dropping sunflowers everywhere. So I'm putting one sunflower. Now I'm on the sun-filled purple. And even though these are a diff different varieties, um, they are, have the same seed to bloom count. And the sun fill line, we have green and purple. You can find and see pictures of both of them over on our website. They are super useful as filler for bouquets when you harvest them earlier before they start to develop petals and open. And they are pretty dadgum priceless too, I'll tell you. We always include, typically we use the green every week, all season long until about now. And um, now we add the purple in because when these are going to be blooming in the fall, right? All right. So now the next step, I'm putting my finger on and just pushing them down in. And because sunflowers germinate best in darkness and covered it with soil. And once I take these into the grow room and water them in using a watering can with a sprinkler head, or you could take them outside. Um, that washes the soil off the walls of the cell down onto the seed and that covers them and creates darkness. Then I pop these trays onto our seedling heat mat, which warms the soil, which increases the rate of germination and makes it quicker. And once 50% of them sprout, depending on what your conditions are, you would either move them to under grow lights, but we just typically move them out onto the carport, or not the carport, out on the porch, 
with full blast and sun. And you have to protect, we have to protect them from varmints. The varmints would be birds are our biggest enemy. Um, cardinals love to pluck the tops off as well as those precious little finches. So you just have to protect them. And you can do that with bulb crates on top of them, row cover, do whatever you have to do um, to protect them. Because, But I, I have learned if they pluck just part of the foliage off, a lot of times they will actually regrow. All right, now we're on to the Vincents. Now the Vincents were recommended to me. Um, one of my good friends, Jonathan and Megan Lease from Raleigh, North Carolina, they're instructors for us. I knew them long before they became instructors. They're the ones that do the course, the no-till micro scale flower farm, incredible little course, like 150 bucks. Um, they grow on less than a half an acre. Their season, they have created this dynamic model of they only sell in very early spring. They close their growing operation down the end of May. They grow the maximum for the biggest demand season because they also are homesteaders um, and they grow a lot of vegetables and hunt and put up food. I mean, it's really a very interesting course. Um, it's full of a lot of great information. Anyway, this is his go-to sunflower. That's why I'm growing it. Um, this is the first year and we are trialing so many sunflowers. Not everybody gets their fair shake. So I grow them over and over. So I'm sure to recognize their good qualities. Um, and so that's what we're starting here. And so this is fresh. Yes. I'm not sure which is which. Fred, one of them's got a green center and one of them's got a brown center. And um, there was something about them that I really liked. And that was the way that the some sunflowers hold their heads really tight to the stem and that makes them kind of hard to use. These were looser, not loose like in soft, but just better. So let's take a look here. So I'm going to drop a seed on each one. And so um, the rest of the process is they go out onto the porch and they grow until they're two to three weeks old. When you pull on the stem and the entire cell easily comes out without you feeling like you're going to rip the stem off of the roots, that's when it's time for them to plant. We find that to happen at about two and a half weeks or so. If you're having a poor root system develop, that is a lack of heat when the seeds are sprouting. That's why I really love to use a seedling heat mat. Not only does it speed it up, it gives you a better quality seedling. And then we plant them in the garden. They are planted in the garden. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, they're planted in the garden into a 30 inch wide bed with that has been prepared with organic. Did I just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, that's been prepared with dry organic fertilizer every fertilizer every single time. I mean, sunflowers will grow in pretty poor soil, but they appreciate food and water. They will reward you. So we always add um, food. So the bed is prepared. We do not use any film on the bed, which we use everywhere else we're doing transplants. Um, we plant using the floral support netting as a planting grid. We plant five rows in that 30 inch bed six inches apart in all directions. And we hand water them in with a wand on a hose. And that is basically what they get. Um, because we get so much rain here where I am located, you'll have to gauge for your own conditions. Um, but you're looking for about an, a good watering once a week. Um, and then we also, because we plant so many, we do not use support netting to support the stems, which they need. Um, because we plant such quantity and so often, if you are a small grower, you really need to do flower support netting. Because if you lose a whole week of sunflowers because of a storm blowing through, you're sunk. You know, if you're counting on them for bouquet subscriptions or something. So, um, and then literally, that one got two, 
then literally you don't go back to them until they're starting to bloom. And um, we cut every single week. And I'll look here in a minute before I, after I'm done with this, I'll see if I've got a sunflower here at the cutting stage. I don't think I do. These were all, oh, I do. I can actually, I'll go around and grab one because I'll also grab the cap to my pen, y'all. I can't stand that it's sitting here open, drying out. And that's a brand new pen. Um, and sunflowers, we floated a bouquet subscription service. I mean, a um, supermarket bouquet business on sunflowers. You can puff up a bouquet in the blink of an eye. So I want to show you. So that's basically the cycle of what we do for sunflowers. First off, I want to show you this. This is the perfect size sunflower. Can you see that on my hand? Wait a minute. How big that is? It's not very big. It's about the same size as the palm of my hand. This is the perfect size for bouquets and floral customers. And I will tell you what else. Our commercial customers love them even when they're smaller. They get a little smaller as you move into fall, but they absolutely adore them. So y'all look at that picture for just a minute. I'll be right back. I'm going to get the cutting stage of a sunflower and I'm getting my cap to my pen. All right, so I cut these um, yesterday. We're having another big photo shoot here um, Wednesday. So I needed to get sunflowers going so they'd be open for us. The pen is secure. All right, so these are some that I cut yesterday morning um, before the show. And you can see they were at different stages. This one was obviously more open. But friends, let me find the perfect one here. The best stage to cut sunflowers, in my personal opinion, which is just that, an opinion, right? It's just like this. Can you see that the petals are just starting to lift off the face? These quickly go to that indoors, safe and sound from grasshoppers, beetles, and all such bugs that eat them and also put spots on them, which is basically poop and pee, right? We all know that. Um, and so these are, especially when you're looking, I mean, the fact, I have to tell you all this, this is the white light, which is one of my all-time favorite sunflowers. Um, it's only been in the last two years that I've been able to grow white at this time of the year because our pest pressure used to be so poorly or so strong, I, strong for them, poor for me, right? Um, but we have just really practiced what I preach in my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, about restoring the natural order. And just our overall general population of pests is so much lower. I'm just able to grow things now that I couldn't before. Before, these would have been eaten alive. Even if you cut them, this is the stage we cut them at. Um, the pest damage would be unbelievable. And there was just nothing you could really do about that. All right, wait a minute. I got to put these back. So easy for me. You know, I can't like lay these down because there's so much to do around here that I'll forget they're not in water and they'll be goners. All right, y'all. Coffee. So what I wanted to say was one of the fun things we do on the Friday live shopping show, and I'm afraid you do have to attend live, we give away some killer stuff, stuff you can't buy from us. And one such thing that we'll be giving away here soon is these are the Gardener's Workshop employee cups. And this is my most favorite cup. And I love tall, heavy cups. And I will tell you, though, this cup has a unique feature. It comes with this little plastic or rubber gasket on the bottom. And I don't understand they put a hole in the bottom of these cups. This is totally off subject, y'all, but you have to know this is what happens in my kitchen every morning at 5 a.m. There's a little teeny pinhole right here. I don't know why it's there. It's in all the cups. I mean, I bought 50 of them, right? And um, 
when you put this in the dishwasher, see, not everybody puts in the dishwasher. I do. It fills that up inside there with water. So every morning when I pour my coffee into my cup, the rubber gasket came off and I just never put it back on. It's removable. And I just, it was annoyance. Every morning when I pour my coffee in, this little booger shoots water across my counter. It's kind of a funny thing that happens every morning. I've learned how to deal with that, but I love the cup so much. But what I'm getting at is we give away killer stuff and this, and also Gardner's Workshop hats. Those are both things that you can't get anywhere else that everybody loves and wants, um, along with products and introductory stuff and a lot of fun stuff. Now, so I'm going to, I will, after we're off here, I'll take these in, water them, pop them onto heat. Then they'll go outside once they sprout, protect them from varmints, and they'll get planted in a couple of weeks. And for those of you that have um, kind of fallen off, you need to get back on um, the program here. I mean, so some of these... I think the Vincent's might be a little quicker. So let's just say a sunflower says that it's 50 to 55 days until it blooms. My first expected frost is mid-November. And with climate change, you just never can count on that. You don't know if it'll come earlier or later. Later has been the habit. So in my calculations, I am smarter to continue to sow sunflowers probably at least two to three weeks beyond when I think, you know, so let's just take 60 days is easier, right? Because it's two months, a 60 day sunflower. So that would mean that I would stop planting sunflowers each week, mid-September, right? If, if all went well in the world. Well, I'm going to continue to sow them for two or three weeks after that date, because guess what? For me to have sunflowers almost at Thanksgiving is a huge demand time. It's worth risking losing a few sunflowers. So we did the early bird sunflowers. If you didn't watch that, you should go back and watch the, um, where would it be? I guess on YouTube. It's in Facebook too. It's easier to find on YouTube. Seed starting Saturdays back in March when we were doing them and actually, yeah, early March doing them super early. Oh my gosh, the success stories from people. Anyway, sunflowers are significant and as early and as late as you can have them is very good for your business. All right, let's see what you guys have to say here. All right, so good morning. All right, so Ann is still planting weekly sunflowers. She's planted some um, yesterday and she just started some bicolors. Oh yeah, um, the bicolor plum. And what's the other? I think the red, yeah, um, the yeah. Is it lemon red? I hadn't even looked at the names recently. I have so many sunflower names in my head. All of those bicolor, dark colored sunflowers are super useful in the fall. Although you still have to know that typically they have soft necks. See this guy right here? Boop. There. <laughs> that is a branching sunflower, which I do not recommend any commercial grower grow, grow a branching. This was for a photo shoot um, grow. They're gorgeous, but they have soft necks. All of these specialty color, even these white ones, can have soft necks. And that's why I use hydrator in the harvesting bucket and I use quick dip. I just put about two tablespoons in the harvest bucket along with that CVB tablet that kills the bacteria. And it just helps and keep the stems really straight. And that helps to prevent that. But necks are a problem with bi colors and dark colors, as well as premature petal dropping. So you definitely want to Oh, I've got so much dirt right here in front of me. Um, you definitely want to harvest them earlier than later for that. Um, thank you. Oh, we got people. Oh, Julie in Kentucky. We're so keeping Kentucky in our prayers and thoughts with all the flooding going on. I mean, it just rips my, I can't watch any of it on TV. Um, I don't need to know. I just, 
We just need to send money and prayers. That's what they need is money and prayers. Um, oh my goodness. Yvonne, you're multitasking. You old good girl. You, she has her earbuds in listening while at the farmer's market. Um, Thanks for all your education. You are so very, very welcome. All right. So we got people all over. Good morning. Cover crop. Can you tell me what I need to know as a beginner? Well, yes. So my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, has, I think, two or four pages de designated to the way to handle cover crops, particularly, I mean, it's written for home gardeners, right? Which means there's no equipment typically. Um, and so the thing you need to remember is just like there's cool season and warm, se warm season annuals, there are cool season and warm season cover crops. Warm season is what you plant that grows during the heat and cool. Um, typically, you plant them in the fall to grow up to be a little plant and to winter over. That is what it protects your soil. One of the benefits of doing that, right? My recommendation um, for beginner or people that do not have equipment um, is in, um, is to do for warm season, buckwheat. I just planted buckwheat yesterday. Um, you buckwheat goes from seed to bloom in about 30 days. It's a warm season. We plant it over and over and over again all summer. If I'm starting a new garden space, that's exactly what we do all summer. We plant buckwheat and went right when it starts to bloom and be beautiful, we extinguish it. However, that's a whole other conversation. Do you mow it? Do you till it? Do you cover it? Whatever you do, there's a lot of different ways to do it. We extinguish it, however, and plant it again. It adds tons of organic mass to the soil when you can incorporate it, um, as well as its great habitat while it's up. It suppresses weeds. Um, so, but what this is what I see happening to people when they start shopping. If you shop your buck, if you buy your cover crop from us, this will not be a problem because we only sell buckwheat and, and crimson clover, the two that I recommend for the general population. But what happens is when people shop other places where there's lots of other kinds of cover crops, they start buying different kinds. And that's when the trouble starts. The second piece of trouble is you have to extinguish and end a cover crop right as it's at the midst height of its beautiful bloom. You can't let it stay out there because the plant gets tough. It starts to set seed. It gets harder to incorporate and end and it becomes a problem. And then people never want to plant cover crop again. Um, for the fall planted to overwinter is the crimson clover. And it follows the same. I mean, it winters over, survives down to, I think, negative 10 degrees, it'll survive. Um, and then in spring, when it gets that gorgeous red bloom, it's the time to extinguish it. You're not growing this to be beautiful. You're growing it to build your garden and to build habitat, right? Um, so I would recommend checking out Vegetables Love Flowers, a couple of pages in there. And there's a lot on my website under resources. If you go to the blog and search cover crop, I did like an hour and a half live two years ago on that. That would probably be very, very helpful. Hello, Sharon in the UK. Good morning, Wanda. So Wanda is heading out to the farmer's market in Alaska, and it's because of Wanda and her friends up there that we have finally figured out how we can now ship to Hawaii and Alaska. Thank you, Wanda, so much. Um, and so it took some two IT people and a lot of time, but we can now ship to Hawaii and Alaska, and we're pretty thrilled about that. So Wanda is in... Um, Alaska, and she's a peony grower. She grows other stuff too, but that's a big peony production area in Alaska, and we're just glad to have them on board. All right, friends, so let's see here. Gabrielle, hi, Lisa. Thank you for your content and all your hard work. I'm having an issue with my baby sunflowers. I believe chipmunks, ooh, boo hiss, are eating the tops off of them. I've since netted my next weekly planting. However, I'm not sure how to keep them safe and away from the critters eating them. Any input would be appreciated. So totally get it. We don't have um, those cute little chipmunks here. We have squirrels. We have rabbits. 
um, and we have birds. And so I'm not sure which, if you're talking about they're eating them while they're sitting outside growing while and still trays are out in the garden, but the same thing for both of them. Um, when we, we have a certain area of our garden, which actually I just eliminated this area the other day, we had an area next to a place that I just let kind of be wild. We cannot plant anything there because the rabbits lived in that wild area and would come out and eat. I mean, literally the overnight, everything to the ground. So I have just pushed them back and made them be further away. Um, but the way that we resolve that problem is we would hoop and cover everything immediately when it was planted. Uh, it was a pain in the butt, but it keeps your seedlings there, but you do need to be aware of overheating. And um, we've never had a sunflower overheating problem. So that keeps all of the sed out, but you have to do it immediately following planting. Um, and it really works. It's just more work. That's the problem, right? And it's so funny that Bobo planted a half a bed of actually um, Vincent sunflowers. I guess she planted them 10 days ago or something within two days, all gone. I mean, I just wanted to wring somebody's neck. <laughs> so I totally get it. But that's, and when we plant in that area, certain plants, we have to really protect them. So hope that helps. Hey, Lisa, I just wanted to tell you, I got your cool flowers and vegetables, love flowers, books. I feel ready to tackle my fall sown spring flowers. And when I start my business, I felt like I couldn't afford to take any courses, but I've counted up to $500 worth of mistakes I've made so far. I regret not starting on the right foot. Thank you for always so being so generous with your knowledge. Friends, thank you, Jessica, for that. Um, I better than anybody understand about bootstrapping, and, you know, trying to just do what you have to do to get started, whether you're starting a home garden or you're starting into the flower farming business. But so often I will tell you what I see and experience myself is we spend our money on the wrong things. You know, gosh, I could tell so many stories. How about the person that knew nothing that spent a thousand dollars on tulip bulbs that they ended up not being the right bulbs for cuts? They ate the thousand dollars tulip bulbs. Um, but yet they didn't feel like they could spend the money to get some education. You know what I mean? It's like, I understand how that looks like. That's the way to start, like start growing something so you can make some money. It just is not that simple. And the mistakes saved. Dave Dowling always says that, I mean, his course has saved people thousands of dollars. Um, in wrong decisions and wrong planting and wrong everything. Um, so Jessica, thank you for that. And, um, and as a gardener and a flower farmer, this is what we're supposed to send, spend all winter doing is sinking our roots deep by getting education. And I'm working on two new projects. And we were just talking about this morning that what some of those winter projects would be for one said project. And I mean, there's just so much that we don't know. Even somebody that might be seasoned in an area, let's just say um, in an area of a business or gardening. I mean, what is the difference between the way I garden and the way Dave Dowling gardens night and day? He was a perennial bulb house growing producer after he did what I did. So he looks at things very differently, has different experience. And so friends, knowledge is so powerful. And thank you, Jessica, for sharing your experience. Um, and I just, I totally get it. This time of the year, it's really hard for people to get educated, but that is what November, December, January, and February should be all about for most people um, that live in the States. You're time may be a little bit um, different depending on your seasons. Watching you from Ferry on Puget Sound, very cool in Pacific Northwest and loved all the flowers heading to Seattle Airport, going back to hot Texas. Oh boy. Yeah. You'll get a wake up call, won't you? That's a big change. Finally made it to watch you live. I'm at work with you in my ears. Thank you, Lisa. I'm trying to follow you closely. Have a wonderful weekend. Oh, you are so welcome. Um, dog grooming. I, 
This is on a grooming table. <laughs> um, and thank you so much for that. And I tell you, friends, the thing that you can do the most that helps me um, is to like and share. If you're watching on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, to subscribe, to comment, um, and to really spread the word. You know, our online garden shop and our online courses are what support the staff that it takes to do all of these free resources. So when the time comes that you need seeds, tools, supplies, or online courses, education, and books, please think of us. That's what helps to fund all of this. Denise, I have been trying to sow weekly. My first couple of sowings turned out perfectly. Now some are blooming way too small. What am I doing wrong? Also, some of them look great, but before the bud manages to open about five inches from the top, they drop off. They get a brown ring at it, huh? which is where they drop. I would guess that the latter thing there is could be potentially either disease or pest. There are a lot of depending on your conditions um, and where you are. Um, if they bloom early, you know, if they prematurely bloom, that can be from stress, from sitting in the tray too long, lack of water, too hot, too cold. If you're having super high temperatures, um, any Thing that they is out of their norm can trigger them to do that. Or if the day length has gotten really short where you are, I know that that varies from location to location. But I would, and be sure they're getting their weekly moisture. If they're not getting an inch of water a week um, and nutrition, but sitting in the tray too long is a common cause of that. I would take a picture of whatever this dropping off in the brown ring situation is and make contact with your local extension office. That's what I do. I don't know anything really about disease and pest. I don't have my brains too full. I take my problems to those people. The extension office is sitting there waiting for you and they're, they would really love to reach out and help most often. Um, and so check that out, whatever your cooperative extension office is and find out what their process is. And that's our tax dollars at work, friends. So make use of it, right? All right. Are squirrels ever an issue on the porch? Oh, yeah, rascals. You know, that's one of the things that, um, you know, the story of how I used to have a 40 acre horse boarding farm as my neighbor. So it was like we were in the middle of the country, even though we're in the middle of the city. Well, that 40 acres now has 85, 90 houses on it. That happened like four years ago. Sad story. You can read the blog on my podcast on my blog um, over at the Gardeners Workshop. Anyway, we ha we never had squirrel and rabbit issues before then because I had predator perches all over our farm, meaning for owls and hawks. Um, when those houses went up, all the raptors, which is what that group of birds are called, um, vanished. And we knew they said it would take two to three years after the end of the land disturbance, after the houses were built for them to start to come back. And they're just now starting to come back. Um, but we didn't have rabbits and squirrel pressure at all, at all until that happened. And this is hysterical. Those perches, which are telephone poles with perches on top of them on the perimeter of our farm. Um, I have pictures of a squirrel sitting on top of that. That would not have happened previously. Our squirrels are very bold here. So if, again, the key to protecting your stuff using either row cover or bulb crates upside down is to immediately protect them so they don't even really know what's under there. That's part of the success. So in my last round of ProCut Excel and Horizon today, I'm in zone 5B and have approximately 71 days till my predicted first frost. Would you suggest planting six inch or nine inch space in this late in the season? Um, I would keep, it's really about your day length, not so much that frost date for the size of the bloom. Um, if you're still, you know, I mean, I would still do six inches, make sure they get plenty of water and I would continue. Um, I mean, I would keep sowing pro cuts right up at least two more weeks for me. If I was you, maybe even three, um, definitely worth it. But I would continue with six inches. 
My group grow room became incredibly hot when the outside temperatures were 100. Mine too. The heat mat became hotter than usual and fried the soul blocks. That can happen. Should I not use it under these conditions? Love the shop and show. Oh, thank you so much. So what I do when I am seed starting, when the hot conditions are outside, um, I mean, that's when I leave my grow room door open to this room, which is air conditioned. That room is air conditioned too, but we have that vent cut off. Um, to keep the air temperature cooler because um, what happens what happens when we don't use seedling heat mats, even when we think the conditions are hot enough, at nighttime drops. Um, it's still, and I know this because we used to start so many trays, we didn't have room on the seedling heat mat. So I would just put them up on a shelf in the grow room. And when you could, would compare the same seed, not on the heat to those on the heat, the ones on the heat definitely still germinated more evenly, more quickly, and more efficiently than those that were not on it. So I would say make your conditions different. If that means you need to move your seedling heat mat into a spare bedroom or into where somewhere you have air conditioning, where it can heat the soil up, where the air temperature is not 100 degrees, but it's more like if it's warm season stuff, 70 to 75 degree air temperature. If it's cool season, you definitely want it cooler than that. And thanks for watching the shop and show. Oh, I have two things to ask y'all. First off, if you're watching the shop and show and you have our app on your phone, please, please, please go to your app store, go to our app and review it. I mean, give us a rating that tells other people that it's okay to get it. And because it's brand new, we don't have very many. That would help us so much. And the other thing is, is I want to start doing a little live gig over on TikTok, but I have to have a thousand followers to be able to have a live. So friends, I'm not a TikTok person either, but it is a growing social media platform and my marketing people are making me get over there. So I'd rather do lives. So if you have it in your heart to go over to TikTok, just go in, find Gardner's Workshop Farm, like it and get out if you don't want it. Thank you. All right. All right, Barbara, in zone 8B, would you direct plant? Barbara, we don't direct seed any other time than fall planting cool season hardy annuals. The weed pressure, the water, the moisture required. I mean, if you're going to direct sow sunflowers out into the field, first off, you have to protect it. From, we'd have to protect it from birds and it would have to be watered daily. It is so much easier People think it's the complete opposite of what it is. They think that what I just did is complicated. No, not complicated at all. To do this, once you're there started growing, you just water them every morning right outside my door. We plant them. If you Once you plant that transplant, we know we're going to have flowers. When you plant seeds out in the garden, you have to protect them. You have to keep them weeded because guess what? When I walk out there with a transplant and plant it into a bed that was just prepared, the sunflowers outgrow the weed seeds that are on the surface that are developing. So it keeps the weeds to minimal. If you plant a seed and then have to water it out there every single day, you're also watering the weed seeds. The weed seeds quickly overtake unless you hoe. And that's just too much work. So it's really a lot less work. Basil, how to best harvest and when? So I have some... Um, First off, it's the stage of which the plant is in. Um, I find that once it gets a woody stem, which means it's been growing out there a long time, it doesn't hydrate as well. So we like to cut it when the flower spike is, is emerging and is just starting to set bloom, not open bloom, but set bloom. Um, they would be cut the very first crop in the morning at 6 a.m. before the sun has even hit it, and you strip it so much more than what people think. They leave way too much foliage. We also put hydrator in the water. I put that two tablespoons of quick dip. You can find that over on our website if you need it. Um, two tablespoons of quick dip. You cut the bucket. I mean, I would cut two buckets of um basil. I would be the basil harvester. Um, and if you're one of my students, there is actually videos in the course showing how to do it. Actually, um, we harvest them and then those buckets immediately come in here to the air condition. They don't sit out on a trailer in a wagon, whatever. They get cut first thing, cut, stripped hard and brought straight in here and they do really, really great. 
Gumfrina, should I pinch? You know, that's a great question. I have never pinched Gumfrina. Gumfrina and I were married for a lot of years. Then I divorced her because of the harvesting nightmare. And then I finally have figured it out um, and love Gumfrina. It's a huge crop for every aspect of flower farming. Grocery stores, bouquets, commercial, the whole nine yards. Um, what I have learned is that we um, cut the stem all the way at the ground and that keeps them upright and straight. And I used to say, don't net it, but I tell you, ours grows so tall now. It's like 36 inches tall and all it takes is one rain to lay it down. Um, and so I do not pinch, so I cannot say anything about that. Julie, um, the flood was next door county and east of us. She's talking about Kentucky. Y'all, everybody, you know, you got to put your pocketbook where your heart and your mouth is. And given to those agencies, um, I give to two agencies, um, the Red Cross and to Mennonite Disaster Service. I belong to the Mennonite Church. And um, the Disaster Service are the people that come in after the initial disaster is over and help people rebuild. I can't even probably talk about it. Anyway, you know, we all have to help everybody. Cynthia, is it too late to plant in zone seven? If you're talking about sunflowers, I doubt it. Uh, but knowing when to plant is about your frost date. So you have to look up your first expected fall frost. And then these pro cuts, for instance, like this succession seed collection that I've made that's only available over in our app. All of these are from seed to bloom in 60 days. So that means you can plant these up to 60 days before that first expected frost. You have to know that if an early frost comes, it could be a problem. But I will tell you this, sunflowers are more chilly tolerant than we think. And it's worth having a row cover on hand to cover them for one night of a chill, which is what happens here. If you can give them a little protection, um, and, and then uncover them the next morning. Then they go on for two more weeks and bloom. It's worth figuring it out. So at least um, 60 days before your last frost. Hello, Jean Howard. Jean is a local person here. She's over in Gloucester. And Wanda, yes, thank you for pushing us um, along with, we have, we had somebody else that would call us from time to time and say, please. And I mean, it's not that we don't want to do stuff y'all. And I, I will say this and I'm going to, I see a few other questions. Um, it is so hard to understand the depth of, of the work that has to be done behind the scenes to make stuff happen. You cannot believe it takes five people a couple of days to get our shopping show ready. That means moving inventory around. Somebody has to harvest all this, which is me and Bobo. Um, it has to be taken off the web store, put onto the app. It's just craziness. And we're figuring out more and more stuff, but the shipping on our website, that's why we can't ship to Canada. I mean, it'll blow our website up. <laughs> and it's just so complicated. So it's not that we don't want to make everybody completely happy. It's that it's just not always possible. We are a small company. We are less than 15 employees um, and it just takes infrastructure and we're peddling. We're working hard and we thank you for folks that kind of glide along with us. I have your cool flower books and studied it extensively. You are my gardening hero. Is there another list? you have for more hardy annuals we can plant in the fall and also a list of perennials that are also that are good for fall starting and planting so good question facebook user so um yes there is a place that you can so cool flowers was published in 2014 heads up y'all um when we sell out of our cool flower books that we currently have right now um, we're waiting on, a, their publisher is waiting for a reprint of it. I mean, they've reprinted so many times. Anyway, get a book if you need it is what I'm saying. They may not be available for a, a, for a little bit of time, not extensively. Um, but anyway, so Cool Flowers was printed in 2014. Well, I've added and learned about so many other Cool Flowers. You, the place to go and look is on our website, thegardenersworkshop.com. Go to the shop. 
then go to seeds and then go to the cool season um, list. There's a category for cool season annuals and all of them are in there. And it has all the nine one, the four one one nine one one, the four one one on them. Um, so you can find more to get group to um, actually add to your list. And the bottom line is on perennials. I don't really grow perennials other than peonies. All perennials, if they are perennial where you are, they should always be fall planted. You should not be planting perennials in the spring. They need time to get established. Sally, I have the hoops and row covers to try this fall, zone five. Do I need more protection over the winter for snow or do I remove covers? What a good question, Sally. So that, I have two answers to that question, That things that I want to point out. First off, if you are only growing, which is what I recommend to most people, unless you're going to go the extra mile, if you're only growing those cool season hardy annuals that are winter hardy in your winter hardiness zone, they don't really require protection. They should stand up to whatever your conditions are. Row covers definitely help keep them in better shape and help them grow a little quicker and a little better. No question. Okay, so we're not talking about Sally in zone five trying to overwinter a flower like straw flowers that are only winter hardy to zone eight. Her winter is going to kill them. But if you live in zone eight, you can fall plant them, okay? So only plant what's winter hardy in your zone. Row cover will definitely help keep your plants in better shape. However, these are lightweight, no load covers. That means if you have any kind of frozen precipitation coming, covers down. That precipitation should not kill your plants. They are winter hardy in your zone, right? But if that winter precipitation collapses the cloth on top of your plants, it is going to make a mush. So covers down whenever any frozen precipitation is forecasted. The row covers are really beneficial when you don't have snow cover. It protects from that blistering cold wind. On the days that it's bright and sunshiny, especially if you are using um the Bio360 film on your beds with the black side up, that black side up, row covers, sunshine day, it just really kind of just gives your, makes your flowers kind of like wake up a little bit and grow a little bit more roots. Um, so really beneficial. So great question, Sally. Advice for 10A, please. Um, 10A means that you are in the deep south with basically no winter. Um, so you could plant basically sunflowers year round. Um, Pro Cuts and Vincent um, are day length neutral, meaning they will still grow and set bud even when the days are short. So even though you're warm in the winter, the day still isn't very long. But I'll tell you all a little secret, and I can't go on but so much longer here, y'all. Um, if you start them indoors and you have grow lights and if you do interruption light, meaning that the lights are on for 16 hours a day, which is what all plants want and need. But during the dark period at night, if you have a lamp in that room that you put on a timer that just comes on for one hour to interrupt the darkness period, that makes them get bigger. So how's that for mixing it up? That was a hidden tip there, wasn't it? Okay, so this is my last question. I work at an annual retail greenhouse in zone 6A, and we want to grow a crop of sunflowers for Thanksgiving. Any tips? Then you need to do what I just talked about. So if you're doing it indoors, I would take it. You're going to plant them in the greenhouse. Um, to protect them from heavy frost, you definitely need to do interruption light. It doesn't need to be like grow light. So they would be planted in the ground in a greenhouse or a hoop house, um, and you care for them just like you do anywhere else. But you need to have a, a sh even like um, bigger Christmas lights, um, not Christmas lights, but, you know, like we put on our patios now, the bigger bulbs put a string down the greenhouse and just put them on a timer to come on like at 12 midnight. And that's called interruption light. And that interrupts and that breaks the short day cycle. Right. So they'll grow bigger. And of course they need, you know, I don't know how, what temp your temperature, I can't advise you on because I do not grow. Um, 
in a greenhouse. So I really can't say that. Tina, this is really the last one. Thank you so much for all your knowledge and Dave as well. I'm taking his course now. I have been spending this time since last fall recovering from a brain injury that caused me to have to resign from my manager position at Tractor Supply. If it takes me several years to build my business, I'm doing it. It has been so healing for me since the light bulb went on that this is what I want to do for a living. Oh, Tina, I'm so happy for you. What better way to heal yourself than through gardening and farming? I mean, there's just no question. And I'm glad to hear you're enjoying everybody's, I mean, Dave's course. Um, Dave's course is a perennials, bulbs, woodies, and more. And the reason it runs in the middle of the summer, even though it's a growing season, is this is the time people are ordering, preparing to order, and planting this stuff. And this was the number one student request. This is the third or the fourth year of Dave's class school running. And um, that was the biggest suggestion from his previous first year students was for it to be at this time of the year. So Tina, I'm glad you're in there. Um, we have a big lineup opening up this fall. My course opens for registration for five days, the 1st of October. Then Jenny Love's course, Farmer Florist comes next. Then Ellen Frost um, for growing your business with locally sourced flowers. And friends, if you're a flower farmer, you want your florist and designers to take to learn from Ellen. Ellen's course is all about how designers can connect and use locally sourced flowers because it's very different than the conventional method of the way that florists buy stuff. Um, her course is awesome. Um, and flower farmers have even taken it because in my opinion, you can never too much, never know too much about your commercial customers. And to know the florist side of things, it's amazing. Her first week's course, I'm going down another rabbit hole, y'all. Her first week in her course is about the history of American floristry. It is so awesome. Anyway, then after Ellen's course registration, they all start running at a later date, but this is during their enrollment period, is the um, Grow and Cut Flowers in Hoop and Greenhouses with Stephen Gretel. If you want your brains exploded in January and February over growing in structures and the opportunities and the demand and how to do it, if you don't already follow Sunny Meadows Flower Farm on Instagram, you have to. It is an inspiration. Blow your, you just can't believe what they're doing. Friends, I got to go. And I see Ann is on here. I've located, there's just so many great questions, y'all. And I did skip last week. So I'm going to take two more. I wasn't here last week. I'm located in Zone 9B, Northern California, and this is the first time ever I'm encouraged to overwinter cool flowers, all thanks to you. 9B, girl, you can plant everything in the fall. Um, so that, you know, that is an awesome place to grow flowers. I mean, we used to always say that um, a little funny insider joke because we have so many great flower farmers, you know, in California, right? That when they would come to conferences and stuff, those of us that live in places that get winter would like throw things at California when they would walk in because their conditions are just so dreamy compared to fighting snow and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm glad you figured it out. Stacy, what are your thoughts on growing many varieties or stick to greater quantities of less varieties? I'm in my second year of learning, growing, working with about a thousand square feet planting space. Stacy, take this to heart. When you are first starting out, I 100% recommend growing larger volumes of less varieties. If I was you, I would grow Pro Cut Orange because first off, you're learning. Once this steamboat gets really rolling, I mean, it's a freight train out of control when you start growing flowers and selling and doing all the business that's related to it. Um, you will find that people want them. They'll sell week after week. So that would be my recommendation to you is to go with Pro Cut Orange until you have this under your belt and move on. Um, go from there. All right, friends, that's where I'm going to wrap it up and um, see. So that the, the big takeaway here is it, please subscribe to my channel, like and share it if you're on Facebook. 
Um, head on over to thegardenersworkshop.com for all kinds of wonderful stuff. You can go over there and see more cool flowers on the Cool Season Hardy Annual List. You can um, go to the live shopping show part of the menu and get the app and watch some replays. Um, and here's the other thing, friends. We offer specials. They're only good. They're over they are good from when the show goes live at 12 noon on Fridays, Eastern time until 8 a.m. Saturday morning this morning. So good deals. And until we meet again, friends, um, I have a lot to do here. Ciao.